In the workshop, renovating an old boiler, part 6, reassembling the boiler, fitting a new gas burner and a quick steam test. Finally, the masking tape comes unstuck from the tap. Now it's time to start the reassembly of the boiler in its entirety, starting by bolting the front panel back in place. And as I showed in the last episode, these panels are held in place by these very small 8BA countersunk bolts. There are plenty of these, and so far I've been lucky I haven't dropped any on the floor. Although it's unusual, my engineering on the chimney was so good I had to tap it in place with a soft hammer. But at least it won't fall out if I turn the assembly upside down. In this clip I'm bolting the boiler assembly back onto the baseboard using four 2BA bolts. Or machine screws, or whatever you want to call them. A quick tip for beginners, always try and use the correct size of screwdriver for screwing bolts into place. If the screwdriver is too small, as you tighten the bolt, it may spin out of the slot and mark the head of the bolt. I'm using one of my excellent Barco screwdrivers sent to me by a man in Sweden, and I tend to save these screwdrivers for doing jobs like this, so that the end will never get worn. Time now to turn my attention to the boiler fittings, they're all going to need a really good clean, and for this I'm going to use my polishing spindle. And very shortly afterwards I can start the reassembly process. This is the steam tap, and as always I'm using some Loctite 542 hydraulic seal to make sure that the thread can never leak. It took two or three attempts to make it so that it pointed in the right direction, and for this I'm using a special shim washer. I buy these from Blackgates Engineering in various thicknesses, and sometimes you have to combine them, but usually you can find one that allows the fitting to end up in the right position. The other hole in the top of the boiler is for the safety valve, and I'm not going to use any Loctite on this because I need to remove it very shortly to allow me to fill the boiler with water so I can give it a steam test. Time now to fit the water gauge. Once again, I've selected the correct size shim washer, but I'm not showing the four times that I did this before I found the correct thickness of washer. If you watch my videos regularly, you will see me using this stuff very frequently, Loctite 542. Only a small amount is needed on the threads, but then the fittings do not leak. Alignment of the water gauge is very important, so here I'm attempting to do it by eye, and in reality, I didn't get it quite right. When I put the glass in, I had to back it off slightly. But now it's okay, it's really well centralised. All I need to do now is fit the two nuts. What you can't see from this clip is that inside these two nuts there are rubber washers, and it's very important not to over tighten the nuts. If you over tighten the nuts, the glass cannot move as the boiler expands and it will crack. I've done this myself and seen it many times. It's not like a thermonuclear explosion, there's just a bit of a loud crack and a lot of steam and water comes out of the gauge. It's only really a problem with a coal-fired boiler, but with a gas-fired boiler you can turn off the gas. So here's the job so far, and the next part to fit is the pressure gauge. When you put in for a boiler certificate and you steam test the boiler, you're supposed to remove the cover from the pressure gauge and mark the working pressure with a red pen, and the working pressure of this boiler is 60 pounds per square inch. Fitting the last fitting. And here is the last fitting, it's the clack valve, or check valve, or one-way valve. This allows water into the boiler, but doesn't allow water to come out of the boiler. It's just a simple ball valve. Time now to fit the extension ring that I made, and I put the part of this ring that fits inside the boiler into the vise and squashed it slightly so it's not fully round, and I can lock it into position against the rivets just by turning it. Right, it's on with the show, I'm removing the safety valve, putting a funnel in place and filling the boiler with water. Been very careful not to slop the water all over the place. It's only a small boiler, so in no time at all it's full of water. The water level is right up to the top nut, so that's as full as it's going to get. I do not put any more in, otherwise when I open the steam valve once I've raised steam, water will come out of the valve instead of steam. I fill the boiler right to the top for the steam test, because I do not have any way of getting water into the boiler whilst it's in steam. More about that in a future episode. I went up to Blackheads Engineering and bought two of these. These are Sievert gas blowtorch heads. It's the one on the left that I'm interested in. This is a smaller one than the one on the right, and I'm hoping that this smaller burner is going to provide sufficient heat to make the boiler raise steam without setting off my carbon monoxide alarm. As this burner is smaller, it will use less gas, and therefore I don't think I'm going to suffer quite as badly with the evaporation chilling problem. For this test, I'm using a gas canister that's about half full, 
I've fitted a valve to it and it's time to light it. At this point it might be a good idea to tighten the burner head onto the fitting. Ah, that's better. I'm too young to spontaneously combust. This blowtorch head gives a long, hot, thin flame, rather than a broad flame. With the larger burner, it suffered badly from blowback, mainly because there was a baffle right in the middle of the flue tube. If you watch the video where I tested the boiler initially, where the heat of the burner was actually boiling the water inside the glass of the water gauge, you can see now that nothing like that is happening. The brass ring that I made prevents this, and I can position the burner head further inside the flue tube. I found this in the workshop. It belongs to a friend of mine, and it's never going to be rebuilt. I think he wants to sell it just as it is. It needs some mechanical attention, but it will be OK to just test the boiler. And as you can see, the pressure, which was only at 12 o'clock on the gauge to start with, remains at 12 o'clock. And as I let more pressure through to the engine, it sounds like a set of those wind-up teeth that chatter. I couldn't stand the sound of this, so I thought I will get my Stuart Sirius out. Now, this engine is far too big for this boiler. Far too big. Two one-inch bore cylinders for a boiler of this size with a very small burner. It's not going to be good, is it? And yes, the pressure does drop a little bit, but not much, and it's working. It's gurgling a bit because it's running on wet steam, not superheated steam. Maybe I should fit a superheater or steam dryer to this boiler. It would make it more economical. I'll stop talking for a minute just so you can listen to and watch the engine running. But please don't turn off the video yet because there's still a bit of engineering which is at the end of the video. That clip was running at 50% speed. What am I going to do about this? Where the cladding is in between the brass wrapper and the boiler, it looks very messy. So when I was at Black Gates, I bought some of this brass bar. And here I'm bending this brass bar using my small pair of bending rollers until the curve is the same as the one on the boiler and the wrapper. I've had these small bending rollers for many years, and they're quite useful. You can't bend anything really big, but they're fine for jobs like this. Once I bent the piece of brass bar to shape, I cut a section of it out, and in this clip I'm shaping it using the end of the belt sander. And when I got fed up of burning my fingers by the heat generated on the belt sander, I tapped the part into place just underneath the boiler wrapper. I forgot to mention that I also polished the part. By way of a comparison, here is the before, and as you can see, it's fairly horrible. The brass wrapper was so tarnished I thought it was copper, and there was a fair bit of asbestos in the casing and around the boiler. But now it looks like this, and I think it's a bit of an improvement. I still have to do some work on the boiler. I need to paint the heads of the countersunk bolts that hold the back panel in place. And I need to fit a water system to it so I can pump water into the boiler. But that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.